Now, first on the Western Slope, you're watching KREX 5 News at 5. Good evening, and thank you for choosing KREX 5 News. I'm Kate Renesaf. Logan Wilbur has the night off. More than 650 people died by firearm suicide last year in Colorado. Recently, a new initiative was started to help respond to this problem. KRX 5's Adrian Thomas joins us in the studio, and he has more. Adrian? Thanks, Katrin. The University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus and the Colorado Firearms Safety Coalition recently released an online resource aimed at combating this issue, and it involves sun gun shops here in Grand Junction. Take a look. The Rocky Mountain Gun Club in Grand Junction serves as a major firearm retailer in the community. It's also a space where people can come practice on the indoor shooting range as well as store their guns. That's what got the gun club featured on the new online gun storage map published by the Colorado Firearm Safety Coalition. The gun storage map, the first online resource of its kind, is aimed at reducing firearm suicide and other gun accidents. But even though local gun shops who are featured on the coalition's gun shop map think it's generally a positive initiative, there are some concerns about how these gun shop owners would deal with potentially harmful individuals. If you're going to be providing such an aggressive resource to some of the most vulnerable members of our society, it would be a really good idea to also aggressively assist the storage facilities with more information. Local gun owners and members of the Rocky Mountain Gun Club think this is generally a good initiative. So I was a professor for about 40 years. I encountered a lot of students that had issues maybe with suicide and things of that nature. But this coalition establishing a place where people can safely drop off and store guns is an outstanding idea. And what better place than a gun club? KREX also reached out to another gun shop in Grand Junction that was featured on the gun storage map. And this owner also expressed some concern about being featured on a list of places where potentially suicidal individuals would bring their weapons. But at the end of the day, Sabra Okrati believes that gun storage is a responsible, important part of ownership. Most firearms are stolen out of individual vehicles. I think that when you talk about gun safety, and gun storage, they go hand in hand. You need to make sure that your firearms are in the safest possible location for yourself, your family, and the community that you're part of. I spoke to one of the founders of the Colorado Firearm Safety Coalition, a gun shop owner in Lakewood, and she was quite surprised that the gun shop owners here in Grand Junction weren't filled in on all the details of the online gun storage program. First on the Western Slope and live in studio, I'm Adrian Thomas. All right, Adrian, thank you so much. Meanwhile, pressure is ramping up on Capitol Hill to address gun violence. The American Federation of Teachers is the latest group to join the call after sending a letter to Congress. The group's president says public sentiment is behind action after 31 people were killed in mass shootings in El Paso, Texas and Dayton, Ohio earlier this month. Federal government officials agree that discussions about gun legislation are ongoing, but some Republicans say the House passed bill on expanded background checks must be modified in order to attract support in the GOP-led Senate. The House Judiciary Committee will meet next week to work on more gun measures, including red flag law proposals. And in your courtroom news for this evening, three men arrested in an online child prostitution sting and a man suspected of drug trafficking appeared in court this morning. The last time Dr. George Gonzalez appeared in court, his defense told the judge they would be providing additional info to the district attorney's office, which they felt would alter what they were currently being offered. As of today, the Gonzalez defense says they received a new offer from the people on Monday. With less than 24 hours to review the deal, Gonzalez's defense is granted time until October 8th to make a decision. In separate cases, three men who responded to online ads for child prostitution also appeared in court today. Aaron Apatang appeared on what is supposed to be his decision day of whether he will go to a preliminary hearing or enter a plea. However, offers are continuing to be discussed, and the defense says they have more information they will be providing to the people. Tory Royster's defense has made a decision and will be headed to a preliminary hearing where it will be decided if there is enough evidence to potentially take this case to trial. Jorge Yan is the only suspect from this operation to appear in custody today. His defense is considering plea offers and will return to court on September 3rd.
In April of 2019, seven different men in Mesa County responded to online offers of sex or prostitution with underage children and were arrested. Both Aaron Apatang and Terry Royster are alleged to have exposed themselves to law enforcement, either through picture or in person at the Clarion Inn on Horizon Drive. Apatang sent the image to someone he thought was a 13-year-old girl. Royster exposed himself in the Clarion Inn parking lot in an attempt to prove that he was not a cop. Apatang did not discuss paying for sex. Royster claimed after his arrest he only came to the Clarion to give the girls money so he could help them out. A recent study from the financial website 24-7 Wall Street shows Grand Junction as being among the worst metro area cities in the nation for single moms. Income, housing costs, and access to early education were some of the factors included in this study. Jillian McCarthy is standing by live in the studio with more details. Jillian? That's right, Katrin. The study shows that Grand Junction is ranked the 10th worst city for single moms in the country. I talked to a local, local organization that provides services to low-income families to gain insight into how accurate these findings are. According to 24-7 Wall Street, about 71% of single mothers are in the workforce in Grand Junction. And the average income for a single mother household is just under $17,000. The study also shows the median price for a two-bedroom apartment in Grand Junction is $842. If those figures are correct, that means a single mother would have to work approximately 92 hours a week just to afford rent. The founder of Hope for Grand Valley agrees the housing market in town is far too expensive for single mothers. I just think that wages are low. Um, and I think housing is just incredibly high. I've got moms out there right now paying $1,100 a month in rent, $1,200 a month in rent, just because I do want to live in a nice, you know, decent place. And here at KREX5, we want to get a conversation started on this topic, so please go to our Facebook, K Facebook page, KREX5, Fox 4, Western Slope. Now, we have a post up right now, and if you're a single mom, let us know under the comment section whether you think the cost of living in Grand Junction is favorable to single mothers. Please let us know why you agree or disagree with the statement, and be sure to check out that Facebook post. We have, right, we have up right now, first on the Western Slope and live in the studio, I'm Jillian McCarthy, KREX 5 News. Jillian, thank you very much for those updates, and we hope to hear people respond to that on Facebook. Around the region this evening, authorities say a Colorado man was attacked by a hungry mother bear who got into his home, but he managed to escape serious harm. The Jefferson County Sheriff's Office says a black bear and her cub entered the home last night in the town of Pine, about 46 miles southwest of Denver. The animals began eating bread, and when the 71-year-old man and his wife heard noises and went to investigate, the adult bear attacked the man. Authorities say the man punched the bear while his wife hit the animal with a baseball bat until both bears ran out through the screen door they had used to get into the home. The man suffered several scratches and cuts. This morning, wildlife officials tracked and euthanized the animal believed to be responsible for the attack. The cub has not yet been found. Major academic reform is taking place in the aftermath of the college admissions scandal. The college board is announcing a plan to consider socioeconomic factors in admissions to make sure every student has a fair shot. The board is also increasing security measures to curb cheating on the SAT. Meg Oliver reports. How many colleges are you applying to? I'm applying to 10 colleges. Simone Kyle is quick to admit applying to college is stressful. Over the weekend, she took her second stab at the SATs, hoping to boost her score. How hard is it to trust the process after the cheating scandal? It can be concerning because you're putting so much trust into this process. and You're trusting that other side to consider everyone fairly and not be bribed. Is the SAT system fair for everyone? I think it's fair, and I think that it's fair, but it has limits. David Coleman is CEO of the College Board. In wake of the college admissions scandal, he's announcing changes to prevent future violations, like where tests need to be taken. We're not going to allow those environments outside of schools anymore. And if we ever do, we'll have multiple checks on the identity of both the student and proctor. So back in May on CBS This Morning, you announced the adversity score. It's not an individual score for that student. It really is about the broad context they grew up in. You're changing that to landscape. Why? We made changes because we heard and thought we could do better. There no longer is a single number that tries to sum up your neighborhood and school. 
Landscape looks at how the applicant's test score compares with other students in their high school and evaluates factors including local college attendance rates, median family income, and crime numbers. I would say it's a start. College counselor Gilbert Vivero says the changes can only do so much. It won't be until we see some major shifts in admissions rates among students of color, low income, first generation. Can we say that, okay, progress is being made? Some critics might worry that overeager parents will move into lower income neighborhoods to give their kids an advantage in the application process. But the College Board says you can't be admitted or denied based on landscape, only considered. Meg Oliver, CBS News, New York. All right, and now we're going to take a look at some of the events and activities happening here in the Grand Valley over the next couple days. For all you bike and beer lovers out there, I mean, who isn't? This event was made for you. Powderhorn is hosting their Gears and Beers Festival this coming Saturday, August 31st. Guests can expect live music, beer and wine vendors, and a day full of biking or scenic lift rides. Entry is free to everyone, but guests can buy a Gears and Beers tumbler for $14 or a scenic lift ticket for the same price. And this Thursday marks another week of Market on Main, Grand Junction's Farmer's Market, happening every Thursday night during the summer. It'll run through September 12th and be open from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. Main Street will be closed to traffic during the market, but there is free parking on the garage on Route Avenue between 4th and 5th Streets. Plus, KREX 5 and Fox 4 will be broadcasting live from these markets, including a live weather forecast, so make sure you stop by and say hello. When KREX 5 News returns, Chief Marinologist Chris Nation will have your complete weather forecast. And there may be a stumbling block in getting more aid to the Amazon. We're back in 60 seconds. KREX 5 is proud to provide children's programming as defined by the FCC. For more information, visit stations.fcc.gov. Pull on your boots and kick up your heels for the Mountain States Ranch Rodeo Series Finals, September 6th and 7th at the Montrose County Event Center. Check out the vendor booths featuring handmade Western supplies, pancake breakfast, and much more. All tickets are sold at the gate, and kids under five are free. Presented by Toyota Tundra Pickup Trucks. Visit MountainStatesRanchRodeo.com for a full schedule of events. The Kiwanis Club of Grand Junction invites you to their 23rd annual golf scramble. Tee up at Adobe Creek Golf Course on Friday, September 6th from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Play as an individual or as a team of four. All proceeds go towards college scholarships for local teams. For more information and to register, visit WesternSlopeNow.com. Good evening. Welcome back. Start you off the go 16, 17 satellites. I've set them to the smoke scan because there are no clouds out there. What you're seeing along 70 to the very west of the edge of the state border is a very thin layer of smoke that even the satellites haven't quite picked up. Only the state of the art satellite has shown it over the last hour. I'm going to step out of these because there's a lot to talk about. First of all, short term, red flag warning is in play from noon until 9 p.m. tomorrow over Buena Vista, fair play up to the edge of Vail and in northwestern Colorado. Then the other one is the more interesting one. Why? It's a fire weather watch from noon until 9 p.m. Thursday. And if you've been watching on a regular basis, that is the same afternoon and evening we expect thunderstorms. And yes, these two are related. Why? Because the surface is so dry at this point with a humidity of 9% that while I'll show you a model run that shows thunderstorms moving through Thursday afternoon from a dying tropical storm, they may wind up being dry thunderstorms, producing lightning that can trigger fires and rain that never hits the ground. Pressure has risen 30.06. We take a look at some of the C.M. Just step out again so you can see them all. You're fine in all directions. Just keep in mind you're going to need an air conditioner if you're headed out into Utah or into Nebraska as those temps are in the century marker or higher. Trees grass mold all non-existent weeds almost off the charts we've talked about this for several days they love the heat they need the least amount of water so they're flourishing in these conditions while the rest of our plants and gardens are quickly dying off 90 here 86 in Montrose 92 in Moab upper 70s in the high country that's a good five to four degrees cooler in almost every location why because last night we were able to cool off a lot quicker what we call radiational cooling fancy way of saying that there were no clouds at all the warmth from yesterday escaped much quicker and we were able to get to 
lower overnight lows. Then that in turn took longer to rebound. That will not be the case tomorrow as high pressure will move back over us and absolutely cook us. We take the winds. They're all between 5 and 15. We've seen a few gusts as high as 20, but not bad. We look at the dew points. Ranging from the single fours there, the color scheme's not quite right, to about 18 in Aspen and 24 here. Now the real problem. As usual around here, humidity's bone dry. 4% in Delta, 4 in Moab, 9 here, 8 in Montrose, 10 and 12 in the high country. It's a bone dry environment. When we look at the other side of the state, they're starting to see moisture coming up from the Gulf and a little bit of cool air to the north on them. Because of that, we have a couple issues. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the satellite scan, this one occurred this morning. They do it twice a day for specifically smoke. But that GO 16 satellite is always scanning, and that's how it's able to show you that small layer. Here's where it gets interesting. You can see the moisture is beginning to slowly switch there, the surge up coming in. That's what's created a couple of storms off of Trinidad. And you can see that the two convergence points right there starting those storms, cooler air on the the backside up towards Sterling. When we look at the temps, you know they've got cool air up there. They've only been up to about 72, and we've already gotten to about 95 today. These won't be official for about another hour. Storm threat is where that moisture surging up from the Gulf for tonight. That will taper off after about 10 o'clock tonight. Then for tomorrow, same zone because it takes a while for that moisture to come up and bottle up against the Rockies. Here's Thursday. That's where the wave comes off this dying tropical storm and spreads thunderstorms across most of the region. Let me show you how that's going to reach us. Jet stream is still in place over us onto the other side of the Rockies. It's now dipping well down into Texas. Put it into motion. What you need to focus on here are these little brown lines. Those are waves of low pressure off the double cord system. That one is a main normal low, the other one, the dying tropical depression. Those eject energy at us. Better way to show you that, though, is the wide future cast. High pressure keeps us cooked as it moves closer. That's the wave as it begins to move in. Thursday, there it is. Thunderstorms in the afternoon spreading over the region and weakening that pocket of high pressure. Let's take a quick check of the model run and I'll get you on to the next seven days. Let's put it into motion for you. High, de high definition future cast. We run it through. Clear skies tonight, Tuesday. Clear skies all the way till late in the evening. Then here it comes. The wave begins to initialize, move through the region. Those are the isolated thunderstorm threat for Thursday, and then it is gone by Friday. Because of that, 40% chance on Thursday, but we go to 98 tomorrow. I am seeing some indications in the data that Monday and Tuesday are going to get real good around here. They're coming into agreement on a lot of cold air and a a lot of moisture, but we're going to wait until we have consistency. Quick check of Montrose. We'll be right back. It's Grand Junction's signature summertime event, the Downtown Market on Main, presented by Rocky Mountain Health Plans, every Thursday night from 5.30 to 8.30, June 20th through September 12th. Supporting local farmers with a showcase of products from the Western Slope and around Colorado. Farm fresh food, crafts, and live entertainment on Main Street in downtown Grand Junction. Now accepting SNAP and Double Up Food Box vouchers. Free parking in the parking garage on Route Avenue between 4th and 5th Street. Being a homeless teen is rough. We can put an end to it. Alpine Bank is teaming up with the house for Night on the Street. Come to CNU September 27th and celebrate the triumphs of teens who faced homelessness. We'll have food trucks, live music, s'mores, games, and so much more. You can also bring your own tent and sleep out so a homeless teen doesn't have to. Sign up to raise funds to end youth homelessness. For more information, visit westernslopenow.com. We'll see you at the 2019 Night on the Street. Alpine Bank presents the 10th annual Men in Heels Race. Join us as all male teams step into high heels to raise funds and awareness for Hilltop's Latimer House and domestic violence services. The fun starts at 5.30 on Thursday, September 12th during the final downtown farmer's market on Colorado Avenue between 4th and 5th Streets. For more information or to make a donation to your favorite team, go to meninheelsrace.org or call 244-0422. Doesn't want more. More donuts. More coffee. More time. More information. More is better, right? Right. So to bring you more, we've created the K-Rex Cafe. In-depth interviews with local political leaders, nonprofit organizations, and local people sharing what they're passionate about, our community. And since we only have so much time in our newscasts and in this promo, you can find all the information on our K-Rex Cafe page on westernslopenow.com. Brought to you locally by B Suite Cafe and Bake Shop. Storm Team Weather's seven-day forecast is brought to you by the Flower Motor Family, serving our community since 1968. 
Brazil's president says he needs an apology from the president of France if he's to accept an offer of aid from the G7 nations to fight forest fires in the Amazon. President Bolsonaro says President Macron called him a liar and questioned Brazil's sovereignty. The G7 had pledged $20 million to protect the rainforest from flames, and there's renewed concern that further damage could cause irreversible damage to the world's climate. Manuel Bojorquez has more. The scenes from the Amazon can be overwhelming. Forests once teeming with life claimed by unrelenting flames. It's estimated this year in the Amazon, more than 3,500 square miles of forest, an area roughly the size of Yellowstone National Park, have fallen to fires like these. In Peru, people are using whatever they can, shovels, even tree branches, to try to smother the flames. Many of the fires are believed to be set by farmers trying to clear land. One farmer in Brazil says these kinds of things happen here every year. We just aren't able to tell who is responsible. Nobody is punished. To get a greater sense of the deforestation, we took to the air. From up here, you can really see where humans have continued to cut into the rainforest. There are plots of land where the trees appear to be freshly cut. All of this to make room for soybean production and cattle ranches. 10, 20 years ago, this was all rainforest. What do we want? Climate justice! Outside Brazilian embassies around the world, protesters have been blasting the country's president, Jair Bolsonaro, and his administration's handling of the deforestation and fires. President Bolsonaro had said 44,000 troops would be available to help fight the fires, but there are reports from some areas that the military presence has been scarce. Manuel Bajorquez, CBS News, Rio Branco, Brazil. And Fresh President Macron said in a speech today that the Brazilian president's interpretation of his comments is a mistake. He says the money isn't just aimed at Brazil, but at nine countries in the Amazon region. When we come back, a judge hands down a ruling against a major pharmaceutical company tied to opioids. Stay with us. If we're going to fix something, it's going to stay fixed. We go over every option. We explain every option. We talk about all the costs. We don't try to hide things. We don't try to make up things. If there are issues, we can actually fix those issues rather than just band-aid those issues. I wouldn't even think about going anyplace else. Dr. Poovey is a doctor of great integrity. This Labor Day, stop into American Furniture Warehouse. We've got thousands of items stocked and ready for you to take home today. From our expansive home decor section to our ready to assemble furniture area, you'll find exactly what you're looking for at everyday low prices. The Museums of Western Colorado present History Alive, the Colorado West Chautauqua. September 13th and 14th, take a trip to the baby boom years at the Avalon Theater. Go back in time with Walt Disney, Julia Child, and Walter Cronkite as we explore the golden days of television. Plus, performances by young Chautauquans and the Grand Valley History Players. For performance schedule, tickets, and more information, visit the events page on westernslopenow.com. Summertime just got hotter. It's time for the 2019 Grand Junction Rockies season. Catch some of the best minor league baseball action right here at Simplesio Field. There's no better way to spend a summer evening than with the whole family at a GJ Rockies game. Full concessions, mini games between innings, and the lovable Corky the Coyote are just some of the fun things happening at a GJ Rockies game. Purchase single game tickets now by visiting gjrockies.com. Thanks for watching KREX 5 News, home of the Western Slope Storm Team. And making health headlines tonight, an Oklahoma judge has issued the first ruling in a state trial against a pharmaceutical company in an opioid lawsuit. Johnson & Johnson plans to appeal a $572 million judgment, finding it caused a public nuisance by aggressively marketing opioids and downplaying their addiction risks. 
Numerous similar lawsuits are expected nationwide. An international study suggests moderate exercise may be the answer for patients taking statins and experiencing muscle pain. Researchers say the activity may diminish pain and weakness in people taking statins to cut their risk of heart attack and stroke. Doctors say out-of-pocket costs for multiple sclerosis patients have skyrocketed over the past decade. Researchers in Pittsburgh say insured patients using the most popular drugs saw their payments jump sevenfold. And there's a new reason to polish your sunny outlook. A new study published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences found men and women with the highest levels of optimism had an 11 to 15 percent longer lifespan on average than those who practiced little positive thinking. The highest scoring optimists also had the greatest odds of living to age 85 or beyond. And we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us. Right now at America's Mattress, we have floor models and clearance mattresses marked 40 to 60 percent off. There's a perfect mattress for everybody, and we're here to help you find it. Our clearance sale is on now, so come see us. We'd love to earn your business. Cracker Barrel makes every meal one to remember, with favorites like Sunday homestyle chicken now available every day. And our new sweet and smoky homestyle chicken BLT for $8.99. Come on home to Scratch Made. Come on home to Cracker Barrel. Search for a really strong glue that's clear. Sorry, I didn't get that. Clear glue. <laughs> clear Gorilla Glue. Of course. Gorilla Glue strength in a crystal clear formula for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. Men have a way of doing things. A man has his way of eating, of exercising, of keeping his hands warm, and of straightening up. So, when a man faces a serious life problem like divorce, depression, or suicidal thoughts, shouldn't a man have a way to deal with that, too? Well, now he does. I'm Dr. Rich Mahogany. Visit me at mantherapy.org. Alpine Bank presents the 10th annual Men in Heels Race. Join us as all male teams step into high heels to raise funds and awareness for Hilltop's Latimer House and domestic violence services. The fun starts at 5.30 on Thursday, September 12th during the final downtown farmer's market on Colorado Avenue between 4th and 5th Streets. For more information or to make a donation to your favorite team, go to meninheelsrace.org or call 244-0422. Hi there. At America's Mattress, we know sleep is important to your health. That's why our mattresses are made with environmentally innovative, low VOC foam. So rest easy and sleep well with a new bed from America's Mattress. We'd love to earn your business. Closed captioning brought to you by Pinnacle Hearing Aid Center. Carrie X5 and Ed Bozarth, Mark Miller Chevrolet Buick are teaming up to give you the chance, you guessed it, to win a $50 gas card. You can enter to win by heading to westernslopenow.com or the dealership right here in Grand Junction. Every night during the 10 o'clock broadcast, we'll announce a new winner. And all you have to do is wait for us to say your name, then just call us here at the station by the end of the newscast. You'll then have two weeks to pick up your card. All right, stay tuned next for the CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell. And for news, weather, and sports 24 hours a day, head to westernsofnow.com. We'll see you at 6 o'clock.